The tectonic plate under Turkey is in constant motion. Its faults are mapped, but they're deep underground, and it's not known where they might rupture next. So right now, earthquake scientists are examining four new data sources to model what happened. Satellites provide optical images and GPS, while radar scans show how the ground buckled up and down. These started to arrive three days after the disaster. The first earthquake ruptured along a 300-kilometer stretch of the East Anatolian Fault, sliding the ground five to six meters to the left in some areas. The second was most likely triggered hours after the first one because of the transferred stresses. It traced more than 100 kilometers along a separate fault, sliding seven to eight meters in some places. This loads elastically all the, all the material around it. So here you have a very large fault with very large displacement, and therefore there's a lot of stress concentrations, particularly at the ends of the fault, but also it's a slightly more complex pattern. So there is this, what we call a source model, which shows the fault slip along the fault and with depth, which is very, in, very important to try to estimate relatively quickly to be able to calculate these stress changes in the region. On the ground, teams of scientists from institutions in Turkey are tracking the cracks above the faults called fissures to understand how the ground slid and ruptured. What we do is to look for trace of the fault, as you see just behind me. So you can see it on the surface. And we map them. So we are trying to figure out which map, which fault, and how long did it rupture? These tremors have affected the surrounding faults. The question now is where this might happen next. So all of this data is going into earthquake source models. They can't forecast when an earthquake will happen, but they can show where one is overdue.